doctor. I, I always meet people all the time who say, oh, you're like Dr. Cole's brother. And, and he probably has taught thousands of people uh, some degree of history, and he's left a mark on that. That's an amazing thing. Dermot's column is probably one of the first things that's read in the morning by most people in Fairbanks. I read every morning. It's the first thing I look for in the paper, because I know I'll get something new and up to date. We all lived in a farm. My, parent, my, my father had a job, but he also had a farm. We all did farm chores. And well, our, our parents pushed us hard as far as school. And nothing was more important to us than education. And, and my parents both lived to depression. And so to them, they, they were very, uh, nothing mattered more than being educated. Our mother died at a young age, so we were forced to be very reliant on each other. We you know, did a lot of chores in the household, and we were kind of had to help get, get things going. So um, it, it was a, we were kind of an unruly crowd, but we were, um, I think, a, a, a unit worked together. They both share an incredible uh, work ethic. They both work hard. Uh, they're both, in some ways, always on duty. Uh, Dermot will be working on a column while at a football game or a baseball game or a hockey game. Terrence is bringing his notes to his son's baseball games. They're always thinking about their work. To his credit, he would generally put them aside when you know, I was in the, the band, I played the trumpet, he would put them aside when I would have a solo or something like that, or, or when I came up to bat in Little League or something like that, but, but he always had his, his, uh, his sheath of papers. He didn't have an expectation other than that he wanted you to participate and he wanted you to learn. He didn't want you to be closed-minded and he didn't want you to be a poor sport, and that was one thing he encouraged. Um, was good sportsmanship, and I think that that's really helped me, like, you know, as an adult, uh, you know, you see, when, especially when even in daily life, like when you're in a situation and somebody's not fighting fair, um, it always makes me think of, you know, what my dad taught me when I was five. Pat, I think, said that he was always on. I mean, in that sense, he is always on. My memory of Dermot is a constant blur. It's always, what about this? We should be doing that. Uh, we could have done this better, that was, you know, we did that well. Uh, and that all speaks to how much he cares about this newspaper. This would help us measure how long the headlines would be and whether they would fit in the space available. But it, it's also a, a rather dangerous instrument if, uh, if not used for its purpose. Um, and so I, I remember Dermot applying this to the desk <laughs> more than once as he worked on, on headlines, um, trying to make them fit. Uh, and uh, I'm always glad I wasn't in the way of it. <laughs> Dermot was a sports writer when I first met him, a chain-smoking sports writer. and He'd come down and lean over the light tables and look at the, his sports stories on the light table. And he was very somebody who was very passionate about sports writing. And he only did that for about three months, and I think he went on to cover the borough and numerous other things. But I, I think that's one thing that I really liked about Dermot is that he felt really strongly about uh, wanting to do something really well. He was always interested in everything. Um, Dermot is probably more uh, used to being on time and getting things done very quickly. And that's a deadline every day or calm. Terrence sometimes um, things take longer than planned. Uh, but but Terrence has never threw it to us just right. What I appreciate about Terrence's work uh, is that he's not only able to tell stories about people, uh, but to relate those stories to the broader themes and development of Alaska as a state. Uh, I remember um, playing with my little typewriter next to him with his real typewriter. Uh, I would go and, and, and sit next to him, and he would be working, and I would be playing at history. Uh, but he has a very inquisitive mind, too. It's very clear um, that he thinks deeply and he has a great deal of, of uh, intellectual curiosity. And uh, that energizes everything that he does. He has a million ideas going all the time, whether it's for his own research projects or whether it's for something we can do for the students or some way we can grow the program. I had heard before in Anchorage that he thought the subject of my book was, was silly. And, you know, I, when I heard that, you know, he thought, he thought, oh, gosh, I can't believe someone's writing a book, you know, about the serum run. This is a subject that's already been done. Um, so I was really intimidated about that. But the minute I met him and we talked a lot about my research, um, his, his judgment of the subject, you know, fell away as well. And so I found him just, you know, incredibly um, familiar. I felt like I knew him, you know, all my life. 
And so then, yeah, we just immediately, we just, it seemed like the conversation started and it never stopped. So <laughs> he, he does seem very modest. I think just, you know, he's, he is a perfectionist. He has very high standards for himself, but he, he just, he wants you to be your best. He, he doesn't impose what he thinks you should be or what you should do, but that you should be your best. Uh, so he just raises the bar and always, you know, just always is pursuing excellence. And so, you know, he inspires me in that way every day. Though the worst thing to do with him is to be out when he's discussing politics. That, that's, that, <laughs> that's the thing that can get him really riled. That's when you really have to watch out where he's going to go because he may end up in the, the willy wags because he's too concentrating on what he's talking about. Dermot is a very excitable and exciting person to be around. It's never boring. Uh, and he does feel really strongly about things. And so when we get together at family gatherings, it's fun to, <laughs> Pat's laughing over there, to listen to uh, the pretty active debate between the siblings and the kids now. We have a second generation of kids that weigh in on, on things, so. If you're not gonna take the time to to think about what you're voting on or, or who you're voting for, then I don't want you to vote because that means my vote is more important. And I, I believe that as firmly as he did. I saw he was a wonderful father to his boys. Um, I just know that he gets great joy out of being a father. So I, I'm, I'm very fortunate, obviously, you know, that he gets to uh, do it with me. I feel very lucky that they live in this town. Um, you don't always get to be around your brothers very much when you, as you get as young adults. And uh, having them in Fairbanks has been great. You're just a wonderful twosome, and I think your folks are looking down and are very proud of you. Thank you for all you do.